All right. It's that time. It's time for Beyond Sight and Sound. Let's do this. Are you looking for a high quality beach and sand scoop? Are you trying to take your hunting to the extreme? How about an American based company that stands behind their product and everything they sell? Then check out our friends over at Extreme Scoops. John has been making scoops for some time now and makes a quality beach and sand scoop to take your hunting to the next level. Extreme Scoops recently released their new sand shredder that works great in the water and on the beach. And if you're a new Equinox user, you may want to check out his Surfmaster X3 that can trap those small targets you new Equinox users are finding out there. Extreme Scoops company approach is let's do it right. So do it right, buy it once, and go to the extreme. Extremescoops.com That's X-T-R-E-M-E scoops.com Caution. Please do not operate motor vehicles or power equipment while under the influence of this show. Listening to this show could cause side effects such as bouts of laughter, violent binges of cabin fever, and even dreams of silver and gold. Please be advised. Now that the fine print is out of the way, on with the show. All right, the fine print's out of the way. It's time to roll with the show. We're back and we're live once again. You are listening to Beyond Sight and Sound, metal detecting and treasure hunting radio for all the really cool digging people out there. And as I look into the chat, I see... I wonder if that's for Wyoming Gold. Hmm. Interesting. New name in the chat. Welcome aboard. Good to see. We see the bills are in. Uh, Bill Hayes first through the chat there. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe the in-studio cam was malfunctioning or something like that. Uh, Scotty, Bob, Chuck, Mike, uh, trying to scroll through here and see if I've, I've missed anything. Uh, don't know. Not sure if I've missed anything or not. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what's going on here. <clears throat> I don't know. Looks like maybe there's a little bit of, uh, a little bit of internet issue maybe? I don't know. Uh, I guess the audio's getting out all right. That looks like it. Looks like it. Uh, we'll see what happens here. Not sure. We, we did have an update tonight right before the show, so who knows. And obviously, as, uh, most people know, Sunday there was a archive dropped out of nowhere on everybody. Uh, I had some things going on going on Sunday that I was unable to to attend the show or to uh or to be here uh 
at that point, actually. I, I barely, barely got back in time just to, uh, get things scheduled so that there was a show so that we could continue on with everything that was going on. Welcome to Kindle. Good to see Kindle. Uh, so yeah, Sunday, it, it's, it's just been a long few days. Uh, but that's the way it goes, and that's why there are open lines tonight. Little, you could say we've kind of uh, cleared our schedule a little bit. We do have some guests coming up that we did have scheduled that we will still keep that schedule with them. And then we'll we'll kind of play it by ear from there. Right now it's just uh, one day at a time, you could say. So we'll see what happens. So, links in the description. Our friends over at Shooters and Prospectors, first and foremost, Chuck Smalley, the man with the plan. The dealer choice, the dealer we promote here on Beyond Sight and Sound, multi-line dealer. Dealing in XP, Note to Macro, Mind Lab, Garrett, Detector Pro, Detect Ed, many, many other items, including Dean Ricker's Detector Covers, which if you folks have a machine that he makes a cover for, really, really good covers. I've, uh, I've ran one on the Equinox, and actually I've ran that one on the Knox for about a year. Well, no, it's it's been longer than that now. Uh, quite some time, though, we'll say. Quite some time. Definitely. And it has held up superbly. The, the Equinox, if, if you pull that cover off of it, the head looks like a brand new machine. And I also now, uh, currently run one on the Deus as well. So definitely an added bonus there. The cover that was on the Deus remote was getting... Pretty ragged out to begin with. I do believe it was time for a change, and seeing how well Dean's covers have worked on the Equinox, it was a no-brainer to see how it will work on the XP products. So he makes those for the ORX, the Deus, the Equinox 6 and 800, the MindLab E-Track, MindLab CTX. Sorry to the AT Max users out there, uh... I believe Dean's response was there's just too many other options out there that he does not make them for the AT Max. But for you Simplex users, he does make them for the Simplex. He does. And those things are selling hot. I mean, Chuck's got them, but they uh, they go out the door just as fast as they come in, it seems like. So, <clears throat> something to keep in mind, yes, I know, the uh, the Equinox, the Simplex, the CTX, they're, they're waterproof machines, so one would say, well, why do I need a cover? Well, you know, it's a sacrificial component that doesn't cost very much, that still keeps your machine looking very, very nice. Why why rub dirt or something across that screen and put little micro scratches in it when you can just use a, a control box cover and then replace that from time to time if you want. And for those that missed that episode with Dean on, apparently he says you can clean those covers, uh the the vinyl on it with a little bit of armor all and, and they clean up real nice. Haven't tried that yet myself, but uh I'm sure it'll work just fine. Definitely just fine. So that was a good tip for, for him to share with us when he was on the show. Also, the links for our friends at Detectees. Ken, Mark, Darth, Buddy, and the gang doing a great job. Uh, welcome to Steve. Actually, I believe... Oh... And it is the Steve. Well, welcome aboard. I want to say that uh, Casey over at Detecting the Heartland, he, he just decided he had to get himself a Beyond Sight and Sound shirt. And he ordered 
the red Beyond Sight and Sound shirt, and I wasn't sure what to expect. Uh, when, when that came in, he did post up photos of it. I have not seen a red one yet until he made the post tonight. And that's, that's a pretty sharp looking shirt. I like it. I think I like it. I'm not necessarily real big on the color red, but that, that looks nice. I might, uh, I might have to look into one of those myself there, uh, maybe for the eye and eye hunt. No. Make sure that I'm easy to spot at the, uh, the meet and greet or whatever. So we've got that link, we've got the links for Extreme Scoops, the links for the Ring Finders, uh, Detect Ed Outdoors, All Metal Militia on Facebook, Metal Detecting NYC on YouTube and Facebook, Ohio Metal Detecting on YouTube, the Simplex Raffle still runs, ticket sales are doing well, and that runs up to, I want to say, I believe April 2nd. But ticket sales are still going good for that. Either way, great way to get yourself into a simplex at $5 a ticket. You can't beat it. It's worth a shot. You know, pitch in. Maybe your name gets drawn and you're the lucky winner of a new simplex. One of, debatably, one of the hottest, most talked about machines at this current point in the technological race. <clears throat> Also, we do have the link for the I and I swing into summer event in the description. I did go back and after the show last Sunday, I did go back and add the link to the event page. So that's in the description from Sunday's show when we made our announcements. It's also in this last Sunday's show. So it wouldn't have been Sunday's show, it was Wednesday that we made the announcement, so I'm, everything's a blur. Either way, it's in those episodes, it is in tonight's episode, <clears throat> and those links will continue to be carried up to the time of the event, essentially. Uh, same with the Simplex raffle. So you can find those links in the description of the show, the description uh, in the live chat, you can find it on YouTube if the archive carries over to YouTube and wherever else that the archive from Spreaker propagates to. You can also find those links on the Metal Detecting Beyond Sight and Sound Facebook group and the Beyond Sight and Sound Facebook page. Other than that, I think we've got all of our links gone through, covered, out of the way. If we've missed any, they're in there. Check the live chat, that that long rambling post, or check the uh, the description of the show as well, the info, if you can find that up there in the show. Usually, for those that are in the live chat tuning in from the speaker website, you will see there that... Uh, You will see there that there is a tab at the top that says live chat, or just to the left of it, I believe. At least on my screen, to the left of it, it says info. And that is where you can find the links that we talk about. For those that hear us talk about the live chat, <clears throat> you can always uh, look at your player. I believe for most listeners coming in from the website the player shows up in the bottom right hand corner of their screen and there is a comment bubble there that you can click on and from what i'm told that should get you into the live chat so now that we've got that all covered and out of the way and the links out of the way one more thing to mention is that we do not have the flyer yet for the i and i event uh we're still working on graphics design of the flyer, I guess you could say. So if Jesse has not found anyone, if anybody listening is handy at graphics design and would like to pitch in, lend a hand, I'm sure they could always contact Jesse Pritchard and 
he'll let him know what he needs. If he needs anything at all. And I promise, well, I will try to promise, no one will be stabbed. <laughs> oh, there, were, there was a little bit of a glitch in the original post about the... Uh, about the graphics design and Jesse did go in and fix it very very quickly after he made that post because we don't want any confusion or misunderstanding or anything like that so wanted to make sure and put that out there as well uh, there was an issue with the uh, the software for the graphics design we'll say and and there was a problem that came up so it <clears throat> it will subsequently delay any sort of a flyer going around <clears throat> but as long as you have the link to the swing in to summer event or you're a member of the I and I group or follow the beyond sight and sound page you will find all that information any updates as it becomes available even including the Simplex Raffle. It's actually a pin post on the Beyond Sight and Sound page right now. I believe, I I can't say for sure, but I believe Chuck has it as a pin post on the Shooters and Prospectors page, and it is one of the posts that float near the top of the Beyond Sight and Sound group. I do try to bump it daily or every other day, something like that, just to keep it up near the top like we do with the Appreciation Giveaway. Speaking of the appreciation giveaway, hopefully, uh, <clears throat> hopefully Casey comes over and uh, gets his entry in there. Also, we see that uh, Sugi's in the house. Welcome aboard. Been a while since we've seen her and Steve, but it's been uh, it's been quite a quite a few days for some of us. Welcome to Michael. So good to see everybody dropping in. We appreciate everyone that did drop in for the archive, even though the archive Sunday was kind of unannounced and, and just kind of hit those that follow the show. Hey, you know, apparently he didn't drop a link tonight. Well, that's one of the reasons why you should follow the Beyond Sight and Sound page and the, the channel here on Spreaker, I guess. It's just the way it goes. So we'll see how things move tonight. I think we've gotten all of our announcements out of the way that I can think of right off the top of my head anyway. Uh, some of us... Oh, wait a minute. I think we've got a caller coming through. We'll see here. Maybe we do. I think so. Yes. Go ahead, caller. Evening, Josh, Judd, and everybody else. Well, how's it going, Jesse? Oh, I don't know. I just woke back up. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I checked my eyelid for holes after work, and, well, I missed the start of the show. <laughs> well, there weren't any holes, I'm assuming, so that's a good thing. No, no. So we're all good. <laughs> good. Good. Good to know that you're still on the right track of things then. I at first there you sounded a little tired. I thought maybe all of this stabbing people was uh wearing you down. Oh, I am wore out. I don't know if I caught something going around. My daughter is fighting it right now. Oh, that's not good. I I feel wonderful. Yeah. Let's yeah. Just keep telling that. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. That that stuff is going around, and you know, when when you're going from this nice weather to cold to just outright nasty, you know, four letter word weather type stuff like snow, bluff. Mm hmm. Slush. <laughs> yeah, and and you guys are just pushing it our way. We're the ground's covered here too. We're in a frozen mix, and I think they say by the time it's said and done, we'll see temperatures of three degrees or lower, and possibly even four to six inches of snow. So Tam's thrilled. 
<laughs> yeah, I would imagine. Well, but Chuck and I, we try to share everything. <laughs> well, you know, we, we, hey. we aren't going to hoard hoard that stuff, so we got to send it your way. Well, you know, that's the way it goes. You you got to share. We we share in the good. We share in the bad, and. Uh, unfortunately, once once it gets here, I try to do my part to push it on out to Massachusetts for everybody out there. But, you know, got to send it somewhere. I, I just can't get it to turn and head to Florida, so. <laughs> uh, figure that uh, for those who haven't seen the post, I, I do have the post with all the information uh, minus the schedule. I was going to have that on the flyer. Uh, but, uh, if you guys get a pen and paper handy, I will give you guys the information for where to send your payments. And oh. you don't, you don't have to pay for both hunts. If you only want to do one hunt, that's up to you. Uh, if you want to do both, that's fine as well. Uh, but the first hunt of the day is forty dollars prepaid, and the second hunt is sixty. And on the those, prepaid, right? Those go up to I believe you said fifty and seventy-five after the prepay, right? For the for those who don't, prepay. I believe. Uh, correct. Day of the event, it goes up. So, uh, I believe that's the amounts that they want. I. Don't quote me on that right now. I don't have it right in front of me. Right. I'd have to go back so, to the uh, archive and see myself, but it's somewhere. Either way, it, it doesn't go up that terribly much for people. Correct. Although that we do appreciate the that they... will be filled up by then. Yeah, although we do appreciate that they do pre-register because that goes a long way for helping with planning. Correct. And... The, the addresses I'm giving out will also be where you send the money in if you plan on attending the meet and greet the night before. Oh, very good point. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, we may have to uh, to send that ahead of time as well. Yes, that one we want everyone prepaid because there are limited slots and... That way we're, we know who's coming and whatnot, so that, that's taken care of out of the way, hopefully. Right. I if have not, had... Go ahead. There will be slots available when you get there. So if, if we aren't sold out, we'll let you all know. Right. I have had some things uh, kind of knocked off my schedule here lately, but I, I will still be there. Oh, that's good. Uh, and like I said, I said earlier, I man, that you you have my condolences, and uh, I I don't know what I would do in you know your shoes. Uh, the sudden loss, man. I saw it. Right. Uh, def so. Definitely, suddenly, and unexpected. We're we we got some work to do. We'll we'll be. Taking it a day at a time and everything, and and hanging in there as we as we can, as we do. But it's it's certainly great to have all the uh, great support from everybody, the kind words and comments and all of that. Definitely. Yes. Uh, and, hello. We, uh, and we've got Chuck on with us too, Jesse. Oh, even Chuck. Hey, you sound like I did there about two weeks ago. Cut that out. <laughs> right, yeah, don't send it Chuck's I'm way. Ho I'm oh, hoping man. it's just because I'm tired. Well, <laughs> that's what I hope for you, too, because mm, that was nasty. Anyway, I had some yeah. questions for you. And see if you can remember, what's the cutoff date for early payment where it go before it goes up? Is it three weeks in, va in advance and then it goes up? Uh, yeah, three weeks out. From the yep. day before, so that would put it the, the last week end. of May. Last week of May, okay. So get your early bird in. That helps us plan, helps us get the silver that we need to get in the ground and other coinage and other stuff. All right. 
So, and I may have another sponsor coming in on the group. Uh, Ooh. Dean Ricker. Oh yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's going to be interesting. Yeah, he may. He's never come over to a hunt like that, or done a hunt like that. I mean, I've got him. I got his interest piked simply because of all that's coming and people he'll meet, get to meet. So he's considering it. Exactly. Nothing. Nothing yep. wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with right. that at all. And it looks so. like. Hmm. Somewhere along the line, I think we lost Jesse with his uh, list of addresses. We'll have to see if we can get him back. But you well, see, get him got... back because that's more important to me chatting away. I can drop out if you need to do that. Oh no, that's all right. You say you've got Dean Ricker coming though, and I guess while we're trying to get Jesse back in, maybe you at least we think us... he is. He's considering it. He's interested. Right, and then maybe you can let us know about some of the others again while we're getting Jesse back. Well, we'll do that. You see if you get Jesse. Of course, you know you got KG and Ringy. You've got our our main sponsor, our platinum level is Naka Macro, and they're bringing Nomads up. And the last I knew, Van Boone, who's their, uh, who's in charge of their warranty work here out of Georgia, and that's North Georgia Metal Detectors. And then we've got, of course, uh, Deluxe coming and Andy Savage and Charlene. So we'll have those folks there to talk to you. And I think we're going to have, I'm not sure who from my lab. My lab will have people there. Debbie's got a pretty full schedule already, but she was told clear last October about this. Right. So we'll see how that comes to pass and who we get from that and uh, of course then there's uh, a whole list of other people um, sponsoring I believe we still have Ronnie DeGhetto I don't know if he's going to get to come he's got some conflicts there with some stuff but right. I'm hoping he can make it over um, Tim Garten is still listed I talked to him today he's watching some things going on too so all that is still out there. That's uh, he goes by Treasure Chief online, and then another gold sponsor is Sirius Detecting Evolt Kozel, out of Yesplanty, Michigan. Sirius Detecting, you see them online, and the Kids Hunt, our mainframe there, uh, Kelly Co. Kelly Co is throwing in, so we got to keep that. I think Carolyn may be up Hartwick. Wow. So we're trying to put it all together. And, and uh, uh, I believe the last I heard uh, this Sunday, our guest is actually John White from Crazy Spider Adventures and, on YouTube. And we'll and be, there. be there. John Crazy Spider White. And he's got a pretty good little YouTube channel. And he's out of North Waterloo, Iowa. And there's some others that I've got to sit here and remember that are getting signed up, too. And... Uh, I see Bill, Ohio Relic Hunter, he's all, he said he sent his payment. And uh, that ought to be good. So Nice. And speaking of yeah. payments, we do have Jesse back on with us. Oh, good. Yeah, Maybe I dropped want... out. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> but uh, uh, for the uh, mail address, if everybody's ready, it is... 308 Forest Road, Davenport, Iowa. You'll have to look up the zip code. I don't have that, but put it in care of Robert Voss. Okay. And is Bob there Ross. is there a way that they can pay via PayPal? Yes. Yeah, on PayPal, and I have posted that up in chat there. That is I and I Treasurer, uh, and is A and D and not the and sign. Uh, okay. At gmail dot com. I and I Treasurer at gmail dot com. Nice. Now, should if they're paying via PayPal, should they include any sort of a note with that, like uh, you know their name or contact information that they're uh, signing yes. up for both uh, hunts? Either way, you are 
paying, whether by mail or on uh, PayPal, uh, please include what hunt and who all you are paying for, because uh, sometimes you'll have two or three guests with you that you're paying for at one time. That Good way we point. can have their name on the registration at check-in so we can get you in and getting into the day's event. So. Nice. Okay, so there there is that option for those that... Because anymore, a lot of people like to pay online if they can. Yes, and if you can, when it asks, uh, PayPal asks you, what are you sending the money for? Please include sending to friend. So that way we don't get hit with the the uh, surcharge fee. Okay, so we want to do that friends and family. Yeah, the, they changed that to where it used to be a button where you could just click it, where it said friends and family. Now it like gives you a prompt, and you have to actually put that in. Right. That's good point too. Good information to bring up. And uh, for you guys that are planning. You want to go ahead and tap on there to have your meet and greet, and I think it's ten dollars, right, Jess? And we're going to have a, a raffle that night. It's not determined what's in there, but for your ten bucks, you will get one ticket toward the raffle, and then you can buy more tickets on the raffle inside. Correct. Right. So, so bring plenty of cash with you if you're planning on attending the meet and greet. Yep, and that is for. Only that night, only for the meet and greet. <clears throat> Good point. So there'll Those... be some nice stuff in there. Yeah, nice raffle items. People may get the opportunity to be the lucky winner. And that's that's going to be ex- exclusive to those that attend the meet and greet that night. Right. Correct. And that's Bill Hayes asked, clean. Jesse, is it care of Robert Vost? It's Voss, V-O-S-S. V Victory, O Oscar, S Sam, S Sam, Robert Voss. There you go. <clears throat> Definitely. So we've we, hopefully we've got that the uh, spelling issue resolved there for Bill. I wouldn't yep. see why not, anyway. And, and this is a reminder to everybody out there. This is a rain or shine event. And uh, hopefully that it's all shine. Right. Be prepared for anything. All terrain detectors are definitely recommended. <laughs> and right. the last big one we did there this morning, it was a rain event. Yeah, yeah well, so it was a monsoon we event. part this time. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, because that that one, that was a monsoon in the morning. And Ohio Relic Hunter reposted a link, I and I treasure at gmail.com for the uh, email address. There you go. Very, very cool, Ohio Relic Hunter. Now we've got it in there so that people can just copy and paste it if they need to. Much appreciated. And, And Mike put up the whole name with the proper spelling. Thank you, Mike. Awesome. The listeners are on the ball tonight. Yes, they are. Mike's always on top of that stuff. Oh, yes, he is. Actually, he's running a contest as well now, I believe, on the I&I group for those who are uh, purchasing Simplex raffle tickets and things of that nature. Yeah, Yeah, that's part of the uh, 2,000 members going toward, toward the whole thing, too, so... Exactly. Cost the cost up, up in the silver, I guess. To, nothing wrong with that. Mm. More silver nope, so for we're people to find. We're planning a good size event. We hope you all can make it. Hope Barb can make it. Yeah, yes, I don't know. I, be... I think she said she she might be in Massachusetts around that time. I could be wrong. There though. you go. If she makes it, she she will certainly uh, have no problem finding us, I'm sure. You're welcome, Bill Hayes. Anyway, um, with that being said, uh, I was figuring Barb call in and tell us about all her Indian head pennies she found. I did see there were a couple of found. Uh, I don't think they were found by her, but I did oh. see there were a couple found. Dang it. 
Gosh, yeah. Got it. I'm I'm sure it wasn't from lack of trying. There you go. I would have loved to went down there, but there were things that happened here, and we had to take care of business on this end. Right. So, Definitely. Yep. And and Bill Hayes like says, you, we, thanks, Chuck. The check is in the mail. Yep, I saw that. I saw that. Well, Barb's laughing. Hardy har har. <laughs> she got wheeze, according to Michael. Michael, did you witness that? Maybe he handed them to her. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> uh, from what I saw, though, the weather was great. Uh, there, there were a lot of people that that were able to make Florida Hunt Six. Everybody seemed like they had a good time. Uh, so that, that was good to see, definitely. And yep. So you, you couldn't have beat the weather. I mean, the the weather was a a a definite improvement over the weather we've all been dealing with. Oh boy. Yep. That's uh, we're we're getting your cold that you're going to get tomorrow night. We get that tonight late with thirty mile an hour winds. Yeah. Well, not looking forward to it. And blowing and colder than the Dickens and two days of it. And believe it or not, we're up almost to fifty degrees on Sunday. Yeah, and see, that's that's what I was talking about earlier. The swing. That change, yeah, that that tempered change and everything, and and it just helps to uh, keep everybody sick, basically. Yeah, <laughs> just never ends. But oh, I see you. I'll take you, it you over. Dug one below. she missed. It's a good thing you didn't dig an Indian that she missed. <laughs> well and and at least they can dig i mean we're we're kind of locked up right now i'm sure you guys are too uh-huh unfortunately well, anyway jesse what else can we tell them about the hunt anything buddy uh, uh i don't know what i missed on the other ear side of yeah we uh, got a lot rolling <laughs> and i keep trying to get more in and that's that that may be happening tomorrow night, like I said, the board meeting, and and uh, we'll be touching base with everybody tomorrow night. If Jesse can make it over there, that's great. If he doesn't get assigned a ten and a half or twelve hour shift, yeah, I'm I'm tired of those. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. It definitely sounds yeah. like it. Well, and I'm trying to try and make it, and. Uh... Hopefully I can get somebody over there that's handy with a computer to get this flyer made. Uh, yeah. uh, the Where my son goes to school, the their system crashed that runs the Adobe program, and nobody can even get into any of it right now. So yeah, I don't know that what he had with tape or not. Right. Jesse, yeah. Ohio Rally Hunter would like the address at the... Uh, Best Western Prairie Inn Conference Center, Galesburg, Illinois, is where that's at. But I don't have the street address. D Jesse may have that. I don't have it right I off the top of my to. head, but I can send it to him after the show. Yeah, yeah I will make a post as well about the the uh, hotel addresses here. Yeah. Right and after yeah, we get both, done. both hotels, the Best Western is where the meet and greet is because it had the, a room large enough to handle a good volume of people. They have a bar right down the hallway for adult beverages, and we had a block of 30 rooms there, and I didn't call today. I'm, I'm just kind of waiting to see what's left. Right, I we know had one, a block. <laughs> yeah, we had a block. I don't know where we're at with that because all the – so far, your your sponsors and everybody are staying there. Then there was probably at least 14, 15 rooms available, and I know several went out. And I don't know if we're up around 20 gone. So if you want to stay at that Best Western, it's a 15-minute drive from the Best Western to the Hunt site, if that. And now we're not talking major downtown traffic. Just you hop on come around the outside edge on 74 and zip in and you're right there at the park and uh, and it's easy driving there. This isn't a metro center like Chicago or anything. Uh, uh, back up there is two cars at a stop sign. 
Yeah, exactly. And yeah. and you're right. It probably isn't even 15 minutes. I know. Uh, no. That's where we stayed in 2017 was Best Western. Right. Michael, I didn't need to see that. <laughs> that's not fair. Oh. Yeah, he, yeah. he likes to rub it in. Yep. Yep. Well, yeah, oh, but, yeah. you know, it, it went down below, what was it, 50 degrees down there into the 40s the one night. And you, I saw pictures of people there. They're bundled up. We're walking around short sleeve shirts when it's 28 <laughs> here. Yeah, it, it was right. a catastrophe for them. For us, we're going, what are you talking about? This is nice. Yeah, why gold? We're getting a cold, wet, slushy snow now. Now this big... Arctic blast is coming down, and we're dropping from the 30s into the below zero range here with 30 mile an hour winds for a couple of days, and that's where it really gets nasty. Yeah, we went and did our running this afternoon. Actually, that way we were, you know, kind of stocked up and wouldn't hopefully don't have a reason to leave the house. Right. So, all right, I'll back out, you guys. Thank you, Jesse. Yep, no problem, Chuck. Good to hear from you. I think I'm gonna back out as well and I'll get the post made uh, for the uh, hotels on the swinging in the I and I page you can get that shared there you go there you folks go. go to the I and I page you can see it on my shooters and prospectors page I'll re- refresh the links as they come up newer um, we're we're really looking forward to this trying to get a lot of us off of uh, detecting beyond sight and sound and there is one other that's coming that I forgot to announce it, and 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 it's very important that I announce it. Josh Kimball's going to be there. Everything keeps going yeah. right, and and he'll meet and greet with everybody else. Yeah, I sure will. It's it's been a while since I've been able to make it out to an event, so it's high time that I get back out there again. And what better way than an I and I event? Yep, and we'll have a good time, and uh, and. Uh, You'll get to meet some of the best in the industry and a lot of great detectorists coming. And uh, I've been picking it at, at, at one of the guys there, and if I can help him, I will. I'm trying to get him to bring some displays over, and that's Mr. Don Finch. And oh. if Don sets up, you will just hover over some of the things he's found over the 49, 50 years he's detected, 52 years unbelievable I, and i've seen great collections of civil war artifacts but not like this not like him he started civil war fields in the like 64 65 range yeah we're, we're talking yeah we're talking pre-legislation pre-restriction yep and he found everything he has a verified ball and chain found off the banks of the ohio river a slave he has a slave tag. He has unbelievable amounts of Civil War. Just oh, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, for folks attending, if if that can come to fruition, they are not going to believe some of this stuff. The yeah, man is uh, impressive. Just a little oh. I've seen. His house is a museum. But <laughs> house is a museum. Exactly. House is. And he's got such great stories to share. We That's been a while back. I don't know if they can find it in, in the YouTube archives, maybe. I you know I've got it in the vault. Maybe I can break it out sometime again. But he was a guest on the show, oh, I want to say like five years ago. And, and just the stories that guy had to share, the enthusiasm and energy for the hobby. It was phenomenal. Phenomenal. He's phenomenal. I mean... The, the earliest detectors, I think his was a Heath kit metal detector. Oh, I believe then so, he yeah. And his brother had a World War II era mine sweeper mm-hmm. to use. Then they went with the old BFO, and I think that one was a bounty hunter, and they had a Garrett, one of the Garrett BFOs, and a phenomenal, just phenomenal what that man's found. And uh, volumes of books full of buttons and coins and rooms full of CS buckles, union plates, CS plates. (laughs) 
Unbelievable. Yeah, he's, if I he's got it piled bring a everywhere. Just a small portion of it, you can spend a day along two two picnic tables length and just go, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Which, uh, I guess if, if he does manage to bring it, maybe I can squeeze in a couple of go lives and get that up for those that, uh, aren't able to attend. But really, I mean, you're going to want to see this in person. Yep. Why gold? I see your question. I'm having charging issues with my Knox. It'll blink green for a few seconds, then solid green light. Ran the battery dead. Charged normally for seven hours. Now, That's I have a question. A why old? Is this, how old is your Knox? Is it over a year? Number two, is it, when you do the seven hours, did it take a charge? Are you able to go out and hunt with it? it sounds to me like there might be a battery issue in there. It could be. Could be. But if it, as long as it's, uh, oh, what is it? I believe the warranty is three years on the Equinox, isn't it? Yeah, but it's only one year. Read or, print well, that's right. Battery. Yeah, it's only one year on the battery. You do have a good point. Brought up a good point, clean the connection plates on the Knox. And what I use on my Michael is a number two pencil eraser. Just lightly brush it off and it cleans up very nice. Um, white gold charging on the iMac. Um, and you can. It's just a, a slower, lower milliamp rate. I would recommend that you go out and get a standard plug-in for that with a USB port and the one they recommend, I think, was Samsung's on the sheet and in the box. And I believe Nelson says that they, uh, it needs a 2-amp charge. Yes. You need to do a full full charge. 600, yes, full charge. Got about 5 hours use before it went down to 1 bar. Okay. Oh, he's right, got a battery got some, issue. You got some tips to try there. Get the plug, go down to the old store and pick one of those up, and you've got it down. Nelson's correct. Two amp. Uh, clean the uh, contact. Clean the charging port. And what I have used is lightly brush it with a number two pencil eraser. It just cleans it up real nice. And then... Where you go? 3.0 USB. Okay. Well, maybe that's a problem, but I'd still try a regular plug-in. That's up to you. <clears throat> yeah, I've I've never had any issue. I mean, I charge mine off of just a portable USB battery pack, and I have not had any issues. But definitely gonna want to keep an eye on that. It sounds like he may have to be sending that in for repair. I mean, try the other options first, but. Last resort, you may have to be sending that thing get in. Get the two-amp one. Yep, get the two-amp one, and uh, that's what I use. I use the uh, two-amp on the wall, and then in my truck, believe it or not, I've got an inverter, and I can plug it into my truck, and I've also got USB ports. It does it very well. I actually, I think I get a quicker charge on my off my truck than I do off the uh Wall chargers in here when we're traveling. Right. <clears throat> and I guess if, uh, you know, all other options fail and you find out this is something that you may have to send back to Mine Lab for repair work, now's the time of year to do it. You betcha. And now I'm not, I'm not telling you to do this. You can buy a battery and you can install it yourself. Now, 3M, right? Or 3M. My lab recommends that you send it in and have it changed. Well, I tend to lean that way, too. That is a sealed unit. If right. If you do not get the seat right and it leaks, well, hmm. Uh, yeah. But I, it's, I would have to recommend, too, if, if you're going to do that, you're probably better off sending it into Mine Lab and having them do it because you you could affect the waterproof integrity of the machine. Right, and you could void the warranty. If they figure out you've opened up your machine, it might void your three-year. 
Yes, you could, and if you think they can't tell, they can tell. Yes. Yep. So that's another good point, too, and hopefully those uh, those tips will help them with their issue. Hopefully that gets resolved, and uh, who knows, maybe they even let us know if it worked out for them. Why gold? Which number did you try to contact mine lab? Did you use the one that's in the box for warranty repair that came with your box? And Barb says email them. That is correct. So, uh, it usually works better, know. yeah. Right. And I, hello, Lenny. I seen you jump in there. Sorry. Yeah. We've been working, work out a problem there. Yeah, Lenny's in there, but yeah, usually your your best contact path is going to be the email address. It it may seem like it's taken a little bit of time. There's, you know, we're all an immediate gratification society, but usually it's the best contact route. Right. So there's plenty of tips on who to get here, but I would not contact Debbie. She's generally on the road, and sometimes she'll send you the 800 number back. So I'll continue to try to contact Mind Lab directly. She gets a full plate going, nothing against it, but she gets a full plate going with all her travel and the stuff she's doing right now. So very good point. Very good point. So yeah, hopefully that will help. That's <clears throat> that's been the first that I've heard of that issue anyway. I've not seen any of the other Knox users on the show mention that yet. Oh. Nope, 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 nope. But he may be using a lower amp off the computer, and it won't bring it to full charge. Right. It is possible. So those are definitely... Yeah, and, and you know, the, these are things that aren't going to really cost you anything, maybe a couple of dollars or a little bit of time. So obviously the the easiest and cheapest routes are are the ones you want to check first before you have to look into possibly sending it in for repair. And then if your machine is old enough that the battery is not warrantied, well, then then you've got some additional costs there. Yep. So, anyway, that's what I got for you. I try to work it out. Uh, and you can always PM me if it's not going through, and I'll put a call in on a different line and see what we can get done. There you go. Yeah. Uh, PM me on our shooters and prospectors, and we'll work with you. So, Lenny, you need to sign up and come to the I and I hunt this summer. Yeah, he's he's up We'd there. Like to see you there. He's up there in Iowa. So, of course, they've got him busy yeah. plowing snow right now. But middle of summer, who knows? Maybe uh, the he, schedule opens. He's on the other side of the cold front. He's getting the wind and the cold. We still getting the snow here, but after what is it three tonight, it's supposed to kick in here. Yeah, it's still it's like yeah, I Lenny, said. Come on down. Forward. We'd like to see you there. Right. Yeah, and if he makes the trip on down, he may even get to see me. There you there you go. There's a plus <laughs> right there. I know Lenny and I have talked quite a bit before on the phone and stuff, but I uh, have not had the opportunity to meet in person. There you go. Well, heck, if we keep working on it, you may get Barb there. Think about that, Lenny. Come down and meet Barb. Yeah. Yeah. Who who could pass up that opportunity? <laughs> so I'll get out of here. You guys have a great night. And uh, stay warm, Lenny. You're right. sending it my way, but we're going to give it to Ohio the next day and a half, so what the heck. Everybody exactly. have a great night. Stay safe out there, will you? All, All right. right. I wish you nice guys guy. a good night, too, and uh, wish uh, Joe and Pam good evenings as well. All right. Yeah, uh, when you get that post out, I'll, I'll try to check after the show and, and share that one, too, with the information on the uh, pre-registration, uh, the addresses, and things of that nature. It's really not that hard, though, for some people. I mean, just Google Best Western Prairie Inn, and it'll come right up. Okay. Hey, Michael, thank you, and Ohio Rally Hunter, thank you. 
had a good time on it. Michael, keep getting out detecting. That will help that PTSD a lot. So later, guys. All right. Thanks for the call, Chuck. You betcha. Bye-bye. Well, and we've got, uh, <clears throat> yes, it was a good call. Always a good call. But uh, we've got some of that information there for the I&I &I hunt. I know people have put uh, some of those links and addresses in the chat. Very much appreciated to the listeners that did that, uh, Bill and Mike and and anybody else that may have. And, and if you're looking for the address for, like, the hotel, I know most people are booking at the Best Western Prairie Inn because that's where the meet and greet's going to be. So chances are good that those that hotel is going to fill up faster. So if you have not booked your room yet, you may want to make sure and get that booked because I know after we went through all of that uh last Wednesday, rooms were being booked the very next morning. Uh, as a matter of fact, the way that, uh, Best Western talked was that their phone had been ringing all morning with people asking about the event, trying to get rooms booked, things of that nature, so I know that they were filling up quick. That's not to say that you won't be able to get a room, but once that block runs out, you won't be able to get one of the rooms from the I and I block. You may still be able to get a room, it just will not be with the I and I discount. So uh looks like let's see here. Uh yes, Ohio Relic Hunter has the address for Best Western Prairie Inn in the chat there for those who may want to know. Welcome to Elusive. Uh so I think we've got all of that covered. Jesse will be posting a link here shortly or making a post on Facebook here shortly about the the addresses where you can send your pre-registration fees, your your fee for the meet and greet, anything like that. Obviously, if you're able to, pre-registration works better because that helps a lot for the people that are behind the scenes planning and trying to organize and, and all of that. Also, for the people who may have missed it, there will be raffles the night of the meet and greet, and those are exclusive raffles to those who are there to attend the meet and greet. That's That's not anything that goes on online or anything like that. You have to be in attendance to participate in those raffles, which makes the odds better for everyone that does make it. And there, I, I can't say much more about that as far as what the items are that are going to be being raffled, but, uh, <laughs> you're not going to want to miss it for those that can attend the meet and greet. So hopefully, uh, and there's Paul. I see he had dropped in there earlier in the show. I I believe I missed his. Uh, believe I I missed him coming in there. But at least we've we've got him there. And it is some rough weather coming in tonight. So definitely we hope Chuck and Jesse and everybody in the path are okay. And it'll be heading our way, Bills. Uh, you guys will be getting some of it too. And. And like I said, I think we'll just go ahead and push it on off to Massachusetts, give it to those in the New England area. So, <clears throat> I see that uh, Jesse says that he will post and share the hotel info. So, we do have that going on. At, that will be up shortly. We will try to post and share it as well. Uh, looks like we see... Why Gold saying, good show, have a great night, good to see, glad to see that he enjoyed the show. And we will probably keep it a short show tonight. Uh, I do see Paul saying, sorry for your loss. Uh, and definitely would like to take a moment to to say once again, thank you to everyone for their kind words and comments and, and posts and messages uh it it really does mean a lot 
And there, there have been so many different posts out there, so many different comments that I have tried to drop in and occasionally thank people or at least try to like the post. But there's, there's just with everything else going on, there's no way that I've feasibly been able to keep up with everything. So if I didn't specifically reply to your post, don't take any offense to it if I didn't specifically reply to your comment. Uh, there's just, there's a lot going on. Uh, and probably here in a few days, I'll be making a post just to, once again, publicly try to thank everybody in a blanket post or whatever. Hey, uh, we appreciate all the kind words, the thoughts, the comments. Uh, not just myself, but Tam and and the uh the rest of the family as well it uh it was certainly sudden unexpected and and not planned for <clears throat> so obviously we will be back sunday with john white from crazy spider adventures on youtube if you've not checked out his YouTube channel, I should have had it in the link tonight, but it's it's real easy to find. Search YouTube, Crazy Spider Adventures, and it'll pop right up. He's got, uh, oh, I don't know, 25 or 30 videos up there currently. He, he likes to hunt a lot with Casey from Detecting the Heartland. He's very active over on Detecting the Heartland Facebook group. Actually, he's an administrator over there. Very, very good job with his videos. Very energetic person to talk to. And some people may ask, you know, what is that? You know, Crazy Spider Adventures? Well, hey, tune in and... Maybe you can find out the story behind Crazy Spider Adventures. How how the name came to be. Who knows? We'll try and see. We'll we'll try to get get to that topic and see. Uh obviously he's he's more than happy to share some of his experiences with everyone and uh may even be able to answer some of your questions we'll we'll bring in the calls that we can and get those questions answered and we'll see if we can uncover the story behind crazy spider adventures but this this guy's got some good information to share i'm looking forward to it he's looking forward to it he released a video this afternoon to let the followers on his YouTube channel know that he's going to be the guest here Sunday. We, I want to say the end of last week maybe, we dropped a, a little bit of a blurb around a few spots, had a little post going with some, some very nice graphics work done by John to let people know, kind of heads up, it's coming. We will have him on the show. Very enjoyable videos. Check them out. In the meantime, I don't know. Hunker down. Try to stay safe. Stay warm. Enjoy the time we've got. And we'll see everyone Sunday. If you enjoyed the show, make sure and throw us a like. You can follow us here on Spreaker, iTunes, iHeart, YouTube, Facebook. Good, good grief. We're all over the place. Until the next time, have a wonderful evening, folks. We're out of here.